times I failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, yeah. In my heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, yeah. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart 
God is to bring you praise from the end. Sigh out, Lord, my soul cries out everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the end. Sigh out, Lord, my soul cries out from the end. Sigh out, Lord, my soul cries out from the end. Sigh out, Lord, my soul cries out. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and I will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three and one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Light and the Lamb, the Light and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And I will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Say with me how great is our God, and I will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Say with me how great is our God, and I will see how great, how great is our
Oh. Uh-huh.
Welcome to Virtually Yours at Home. And so I just invite you right now as we begin to gather for our worship this evening, as we start off our worship service by singing Holy Ground, and we'll be led in our opening prayer by Michael. And then our opening song for tonight is Majesty. And so I just thank you so much for joining us for Virtually Yours at Home. I just invite you right now to come and pull up a chair as we open our service this evening with Holy Ground. And so, yes, now we will have our opening prayer brought to us by Michael this evening. And so I just invite you to enjoy that. And then we will go right into our opening song of Majesty. God, our creator, we are so thankful to be in your presence tonight. As we gather together and worship you, we remember that Christ is the vine and we are the branches. We are the task with producing fruit through our compassion, our service to this church, to the community, and to the world. May you bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yes, indeed. Jesus is king of all kings. And before we start, I just have to tell you that as I tested all of the videos today to prepare for service tonight, the opening prayer was not zoomed in like that. So I have no idea what happened since the time I created it and tested it until now. But I guess technology has a mind of its own sometimes. But enough of that. So welcome to Virtually Yours at Home. As I said earlier, I just invite you to come uh, sit at table, pull up a chair as we come together to praise and to worship God and to take a different look, if you will, at Jesus as divine. And so welcome, whether you're joining us on Zoom or on Facebook on our simulcast, uh, just want to say a huge welcome. Please make sure that you say hello. And if for some odd reason you don't get a response back, well, you know, as I've said before, when you're dealing with technology, especially with video and audio, it's only best effort. So if a packet gets dropped on the way to the delivery site, well, guess what? It's gone. So if you said something and that packet got lost, you need to say it again. And so I just wanna encourage everyone that when you see someone join, don't uh, sit around and wait for somebody else to say hello. Say hello, just as if you would if you were in the fellowship hall. So uh, welcome again. And so we also, for those of you who might have a prayer request or a praise report, we have online official greeters on both of those platforms to receive your prayer request. And um, they're also there to welcome you and to uh, track our attendance so that we know who's there, who isn't, uh, if I need to reach out to someone. And so thank you so much to our online greeters who are there this evening, and they are Albin and Louise and Frida. So thank you guys for that. And our musicians for tonight are John and Robert, who you've already heard some of, and Meg, who also will be performing a song towards uh, a little bit later in the service. So we're so glad that they're with us. And also just as a reminder, uh, if you haven't had a chance to gather something that represents for you the body and blood of Christ Jesus for communion tonight, please go and get it. Um, if you're watching from your smartphone, take us with you as you go to the kitchen or the pantry. And you know, as I've said before, it does not have to be grape juice or wine or a communion wafer. Tonight we are using Capri Sun, reduced sugar, mixed berry, fruit drink, and a tortilla, or a part of a tortilla. And last week, if you were with us, we used orange juice and a saltine cracker. So whatever you have in your cupboard works just fine because when we consecrate it, it will indeed become the body and blood of Christ Jesus for you. So with that, let me see what's next. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, well, in addition to our musicians that I've already mentioned, our scripture readers for tonight are Matt and Frida. I had to think there for just a split second, but uh, yes, that's who it is because I forgot to update my script from last week. So I'm pretty sure those three people are not doing the scriptures this week. But that does bring us to the time in our service for our celebrations, our local celebrations of birthdays and anniversaries. So let's take a look and see who we get to sing happy birthday to this month. So for May, uh, Randy had a birthday today. Uh, Roman has a birthday on the 10th. David and Kenny have an anniversary coming up on the 18th. And Lizette has a birthday coming up on the 19th. And then in early June, before our first worship service in June, on June 1st, Marcelo has a birthday, and Fernando and I have an anniversary, and then coming up on the 4th, the lovely and talented Miss Evelyn P. has a birthday, and she and Reverend Barbara and Evelyn have an anniversary on that same day, and it is going to be their 51st birthday, and so last year for their 50th anniversary, uh, Founders MCC did a a drive-by, if you will, um, celebration. So Reverend Barbara and Miss Evelyn were in front of Founders MCC and various members of the congregation drove by in a car and wished them a happy anniversary. So 
where there is a will, there is a way. So let us now uh, join with Robert as he leads us in singing the happy birthday, happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday, happy anniversary to every one of you. And so we've come to the time in our service when we get to feed our tie-dye pig, which is also known as our offering time. And for those of you who may not know that uh, what the tie-dye pig receives and what comes in for the general fund goes to help fund our ministries. And in the past, those ministries have been a donation to PAWS, which is a group that provides uh, pet food for people who have pets who are HIV positive. And so that is one ministry. We've helped to provide metal roofs for victims of hurricanes, food and meals for homeless and low income LGBT seniors, uh, Christmas food baskets, Christmas gifts for families, uh, the recent uh, Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving for the local LGBT center. And you know, throughout this time of COVID-19, a lot of the opportunities that we would have to fund various things for people uh, because of issues with uh, being able to get the product to them or social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some of those opportunities have, <coughs> excuse me, have not been able to be had. However, we do know that as soon as uh, the, the levels of COVID continue to come down. I heard on the radio last week that they expect within a week or so for the level to be reduced to yellow. And so as those levels are reduced and things begin to return to normal, there's going to be a very pent up demand and need for ministry support and for people who are in need. And so uh, I just want to encourage you that if you'd like to help make a donation to feed the tie-dye pig, uh, he likes coinage and he likes the green stuff as well. So we do try to give him a balanced diet when we can. Or if you'd like to make a donation to our general fund, we're going to, oh, and right there it is. So yes, so you can always go to our website, rbmcc.org. And over on the right-hand side, you're gonna see that yellow donate button. You can click on that and that will take you out to a secure website of PayPal where you can make a donation using a debit or a credit card and it is secure. And within just a matter of a few seconds or moments, we will get a notification that, the, uh, that there is a donation there and then we can have it transferred into our checking account. Or if you still write checks, like I do sometimes, you can write us a check to made payable to Resurrection Beach MCC and drop it in the mail to us at Resurrection Beach MCC, 11037 Warner Avenue, number 130 in Fountain Valley, California, 92708. And so thank you so much for every penny that you have donated. The tie-dye pig appreciates it. We appreciate it. And without your funds, we would not be able to touch the lives of so many people that we have touched. So thank you and God bless you. So that brings us to the time in our service for our praise and worship. And so our praise and worship for tonight exemplifies how important Jesus is to our spiritual life and how we depend on Jesus just as the fruit depends on the branches and the branches depend on the vine. So I just invite you right now to, as you gather together to join with Robert and John as they lead us in our songs for praise and worship this evening.
In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil i now surrender you are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames 
to carry your new fire today. Make me your vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Yes, indeed. Jesus does call us to be made into new wine, to be renewed, to be refreshed. So our scripture readings for today remind us of the importance that Jesus is in our spiritual and our physical well-being and how through our connections, our reliance on Jesus, we enjoy a rich bounty of blessings. And so our first scripture reading for tonight comes to us from Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. And Matt read that for us. And then our second reading, our gospel New Testament reading for tonight is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And Frida will be reading that for us. So I just invite you right now to listen as these scriptures are read for you. Today's scripture is Psalms 22, 25 to 31. 25. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him. For royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Let the rich of the earth feast and worship. Bow before him. All who are mortal, all whose lives will end as dust. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. That's the scripture. Amen. I am the real vine and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine and you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone one who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourself at home with me, and my words are at home in you. You can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples.
Thank you so much, Matt and Frida, for that reading. And yes, Jesus is indeed the vine, the support of all that we have. So today's message is entitled, Jesus is the Vine, and without him we cannot bear good fruit. So our scriptures for this week, Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31, as Matt read, speak to us of how God provides all that we need, all that we have, even our ability, our desire, or our need to praise and to worship God. And so God, as this passage continues, provides food for the poor. God does this for physical as well as spiritual food by using others, by using us as the hands, the feet, the face, and the voice of Jesus to those in need. And when we do this not for ourselves, but for God, Jesus and others, the needs of others are satisfied, and we are so richly blessed in serving others. You know, this passage also reminds us of our relying on God, that we're also to worship God, to give God the glory, the thanks, the praise, to worship, to put God first in our lives. And in doing so, in being all that God has called us to be, future generations, those not even thought of yet shall proclaim God's deliverance even to those not born yet. And so our John 15, 1 through 8 passage that was read by Frida is a passage about God being portrayed as a farmer, the provider of what is needed for the crop to produce. With Jesus as the vine, we as the branches, and as branches, we give life to blossoms, leaves, and good fruit. Jesus uses this analogy because people of the day were farmers. They would have understood the correlation, the connection. It would have made sense to them. Just as other examples that I will be sharing here in a little bit make sense to others. You know, if you've never seen a grapevine, have no words. You've seen trees, right? So think of Jesus as the tree trunk, the support, the stabilizing force or entity. Think of us as the limbs, as the branches. And we start out as twigs. And those twigs are found at the end of the other branches and limbs. And as we mature, we grow into branches. And in the same way, those who have come before us, who were our branches, started out as twigs. Yet these branches taught us about Jesus, showed us how to live for Jesus. We grew and matured from twigs into branches. And from us grows more twigs and more blossoms and good fruit. So the vine the tree trunk, that which provides all that we need is just like Jesus as our vine, Jesus as our trunk. So then how does our passage from Psalm tie into our John passage? Well, in order for us to truly praise and to worship God, to be the hands, the feet, the face, and the voice of Jesus to those in need, to be the resource to feed others physically and or spiritually, we must at times be pruned. And what is pruning? Pruning is the action of removing either that which has little or no ability to sustain life or growth for others. And pruning also happens when things left unchecked will produce less and less good fruit as it begins to produce more and more suckers. Here's an example for you. Crepe myrtle bushes left unchecked 
became become a mass of new shoots coming up out of the ground, surrounding the tree trunk and draining off valuable water and nutrients and draining that away from the mature part of the tree, which gives forth these beautiful blossoms. So what I used to have to do was I had to dig out those shoots and then transplant them as individual trees. So at my home in Virginia, I had two big purple, surprise, 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 crepe myrtle trees growing between the sidewalk and the street. And surrounding each one of those trees was suckers, which I would faithfully cut off with my loping shears every time they grew. And then before I knew it, over at the end of my property line next to the neighbors, coming up out of the ground was a crepe myrtle bush. So I knew from past experience that just cutting it down was not gonna work. So I dug it out, I broke it apart into three separate little clumps and I created a brand new garden in the front yard and I ended up with three crepe myrtle bushes. And within a couple of years, I ended up with three crepe myrtle trees. So that's one way that uh, suckers in that case can be good. But normally suckers just drain everything off and they're not pretty. You know, I remember as a young child, well, maybe young child, early teenager, my grandfather, every late fall or early winter, would have to go through his apple orchard and he would have to cut out dead or damaged or broken limbs and branches. In order to save the tree, he would have to prune back extensively. And I remember one tree, he had to cut a third of that tree down to save the two thirds of it. But pruning saved the rest of the tree. Now, these trees that he had, there was, he had three varieties. It was a commercial orchard. He had Cortland apple trees, Macintosh apple trees, and Northern Spy apple trees. And he had to prune all of them regardless of what variety of apples they were, just like God has to prune us periodically, regardless of who we are based on our race, gender, gender identity, or anything else. Because God loves us all equally and doesn't treat any of us differently. If we need to be pruned, God will prune us. So now back to these apples. So like each one of us, each of these apple varieties had a very unique purpose. Now the Cortland apples were an offshoot of the Macintosh. So they had the sweetness of the Macintosh, but they had a tartness of some other variety. And they were very good to eat, but they didn't store very well. But they also made really good apple cider. So those apples would typically go to the cider mill and be pressed into cider. The Macintosh was a sweet apple and it lasted a little bit longer in storage. And then the Northern Spies, they were a pie bacon apple and they would last through the whole winter in cold storage. Ah, oh, those were the days. <laughs> I remember many a warm apple pie or poor man's pie as well. And you know, I discovered years later, what an amazing pie they made when those three varieties were combined together with just the right amount of flour, butter, sugar, and cinnamon. Just as each one of us singularly provide much needed gifts, talents, and support for others. However, when we work together in unison, in a spirit of consensus, the result like that apple pie made with those three different kinds of apples 
becomes even more amazing than anyone could imagine. And now, so pruning is not limited to grapevines or fruit trees. Pruning is used to help flowering trees, bushes, shrubs, and even flowering plants and plants that produce fruits and vegetables. Because I don't know if you know it or not, but a tomato is considered a fruit because it has seeds in it. Now, the arborist, the landscaper, or even the gardener often prune dead, broken, damaged, or infested portions to restore help as needed. You know, as a kid growing up on the farm, we had a pretty good sized garden. Um, you know, there was usually three different varieties of sweet corn, two or three varieties of tomatoes, there was cucumbers, melons, squash, yada, 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 yada. Well, in that garden, cutworms absolutely love tomato plants. And so oftentimes we would go out and we would find a portion of a tomato plant that had been chewed off by these cutworms. And that cut was so jagged that there was just sap was just oozing out of it. And so in order to save that plant from becoming infected, if you will, we would have to take a sharp knife and trim off where that cutworm had cut so that we could seal it over so that the rest of the plant would remain healthy and would produce fruit. Because if not, the whole thing would die. You know, I remember also when I lived in Rochester, New York, I had a backyard. Oh, it had all kinds of flower plants and trees and shrubs and a reflection pond. And it had a ton of marigolds and petunias. And I remember coming home from work at night after dinner in the summertime, I'd go out into my garden to meditate for a few minutes. And as I came across either a marigold blossom or a petunia blossom that was starting to wilt, to die, or perhaps had died during that day, I would pinch it off. And my pinching it off, my pruning it, provided for that plant to renew itself and for more blossoms to come forth. And I remember, I didn't really believe that, because I'd read this in an article somewhere. So I left one puny little petunia plant and I didn't do that. I didn't pinch off the blossoms. And then I had another uh, small little plant and I would pinch off those blossoms as they died. That plant grew and grew and grew until there was a huge mound of blossoms every day for that summer. So pruning, so pinching off greatly enhanced the look and the bounty of those petunias, just as God's pruning us periodically helps us to become more mature, to be stronger, to be even bigger, to be a bigger presence to those in need. So pruning can be a great thing. You know, another example, if you're not familiar with gardening trees or um, grapevines, you know, maybe you love roses. In order for a rose bush to produce beautiful, bountiful, richly fragrant blossoms year after year after year, that bush must be pruned every year. And I think it's either in the late fall or early, like January, depending on the geographical area that you live in. And so too, God pr prunes us from time to time. You know, there may be moments in our lives when we either produce little or no good fruit. Perhaps because we're just in a place of, <laughs> it's all about me. Perhaps we haven't accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, as our vine, as our tree trunk. Perhaps our focus is not on God, our parent. Perhaps our focus is on someone else or something else. Maybe it's that sweet little thing 
that works in the drive through that we hit every morning on our way to work or that absolute hottie who works the next cubicle over or it's something inanimate. And regardless of who or what it is, it needs to be pruned from us to strengthen us, to restore us, to focus our energy, our growth back on God's calling and leading. Back to producing good fruit, good fruit for God so that we can truly be the hands, the feet, the face, and the voice of Jesus to those in need. It is in moments like these that we require pruning because we're not in that moment bearing good fruit. Perhaps we're not bearing any fruit at all. And so we, we need to be pruned so that we can produce more higher quality, sweeter, more beautiful fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so that brings us to the time in our service for our family prayer time. And so because I had prayer requests from multiple places, I went through today and I made a list of the ones that had come in through this week either to the prayer line or to my personal phone or to the church phone. So these are the prayer requests from throughout this week. So we need to continue to lift up in prayer Chaz's neighbor, Cindy, who has breast cancer. And as you know, from the text message that was sent out this past week, that uh, there will not be any treatment. They're just trying to uh, medicate her through medication. And so there won't be any chemo or radiation. Uh, continued prayers for Faith as she continues to recuperate from her health situation and prayers for her relative Carrie, whose husband Buddy passed away this uh, past Sunday, just before past Sunday, so a little, about a, a little over a week ago. And prayers for Carl's longtime friend, don't know her name, but her sister Kathy who is extremely ill and very weak, and the doctors have not been able to come to a root cause. Uh, we need to lift up Dodie in prayer for kidney and bladder infections that she's continuing to face. Uh, prayers for John R.'s friend, Pat. Uh, as you may know from a prayer request three or four months ago uh, that uh, Pat became divorced from his wife. And because of the stress of that, he ended up suffering a stroke and was in rehab and contracted COVID-19. And from the prayer request that was sent out this afternoon, uh, Pat had passed away, I believe on this past Friday. Uh, prayers for Jen, who has a reversal ost ostomy surgery coming up on May 6th. And tomorrow she has to go have her COVID-19 test. And so prayers for peace and calm and freedom from anxiety and anxiousness as she awaits this surgery that has been two years in the making. And so praises Harry, who as you know, is an oncology nurse, has been uh, told this past week that he is going to be uh, at least temporarily the charge nurse for three different areas, departments, if you will. And he is in line for that position full time. So we need to keep Harry in prayer because as he said in a text message, he's excited, but he's nervous. So we need to give him prayers for peace and calm. And so that those who are making the decision for the promotion will see clearly his ability and they will recognize it and they will reward him with that position. And he has only been at that facility, I wanna say for, well, maybe it's been a year and a half now. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Uh, we need to lift up Janet in prayer who's feeling ill today. Uh, continued prayers for Aaron uh, as his doctor appointment this past week. And we need to continue to raise up Lizette in prayer because she's, she's continuing to undergo her chemo and her radiation. And I think I saw a, a post that said that um, 
she was feeling um, some side effects from the treatments. So let me actually go check uh, a prayer request. Let me see what I might have here. So, all right, so Hmm. Okay, so let's see here. I had to get down through some of the stuff. That was last week. Okay, here we go. Prayers for Mama Ninfa. I'm going through radiation therapy Monday through Friday for around, for around four weeks. Wow. She started last week on Wednesday, and she's doing well so far. Um, I was not aware that she was in radiation therapy. So yes, we need to keep her in prayer. And for those who may not know, Mama Ninfa is Jesus's mom. Um, she's had several health issues over the past year. Um, and so we need to continue to lift her up in prayer. And especially we need to lift up Jesus as he takes care of and worries over his mom. Um, And yes, so prayers for Lizette as she's having side effects from the chemo. Uh, prayers for Dodie for health, as we mentioned, uh, the kidney and bladder infection. And prayers for Frank for health. Uh, as you know, he's been going undergoing some blood tests and things like that to determine if he has bone cancer or not. And so we need to continue lifting up all of those people in prayer. And the people from throughout this week that were in need of prayer, we need to continue to lift up Don and Oli uh, as Don continues to recover from the stroke that he had several months ago now. Um, the physical therapist continues to work with him and is getting him to slowly be able to be more mobile than he was. Uh, Oli's leg is doing well. It's no longer bleeding. Uh, so we need to continue to be in prayer for him for that and prayers for them as they work through the process of what they're going to do with some of the material things that they have and uh, other issues that they're having with the insurance company. You know, insurance, well, don't get me started. But we need to continue to be in prayer for all of those. Uh, we need to continue to be in prayer for Jan and Rosie's neighbor Adele, who had a stroke, and then um, she was home re recuperating, and she is having physical therapy, and also last week, we, uh, there was a request for prayer for Jan and Rosie's uh, friend Jojo, uh, who was uh, traveling to the northeast or back east to reunite with her estranged daughter and to see her granddaughter for the very first time. And then there was also a prayer request last week from Janet for her aunt who had had a, uh, a TIA and that she was having slurred speech and things like that. And so we need to continue to lift up all of them in prayer. So let us right now go to God in prayer, shall we? So I just beg, uh, beg. <laughs> no, I don't beg. I just invite you to put your hand over your smartphone or uh, towards your computer screen if you're watching on the computer as we go to God in prayer. So holy God, we just lift up to you right now each and every one of these people who have been listed as needing prayer or for a praise report. And we wanna lift up also holy God, those who have brought forth that prayer request or that praise report that you would continue to anoint them and bless them as a messenger of your son, Jesus Christ, and that they would continue to exemplify all that you call us to be, the branches of your son, Jesus Christ, who is indeed the vine. And we pray also, dear God, that you would lift up each one of the people who have a silent request, and especially for those who don't even know that they need to request prayer because perhaps they don't even know about you. And so we would just ask, Holy God, that you would put in their lives the resources who can uh, help them with the issue that they're facing, can help them to come to know you a little more, 
and can become part of a greater community of faith. And these things we pray. Amen. And, you know, before we go to communion, I just have to share this. You know, I, I, have, I continue to say that there are no coincidences when God is in control because God is always in control. Yesterday afternoon, uh, I had the privilege of baptizing a transgendered male at the oceanfront. And one of the scriptures that were in the lectionary for this week happened to be from the book of Acts, and it was about Philip sharing with the eunuch about Jesus Christ and the eunuch asking to be baptized. And then the other scripture that I used for that baptism was the one from uh, John chapter 10, which speaks of God commanding all to love one another. And so it's, it's interesting it's verified, and it just reminds us yet again that God is always in control because out of those four scriptures, two were specifically meant for that baptism, and two were specifically meant for this evening's worship service. So that's just a reminder that when we are open to receive God's word and to be led by God, that God does indeed lead us exactly where God needs us to be. So that brings us to the time in our service for our communion. So as we gather for communion, I just invite you to join with Robert as he leads us in singing Santo, Santo, Santo. <laughs> Yes, indeed, holy are you, Lord. And so we've come to the time in our service when we are invited to come and be at table with Christ Jesus, to be at Christ's table. And so at every MCC throughout the world, this is an open table. What that means is this is not our table. It is not MCC's table. This is a table that we simply have the honor and the privilege of sharing with you as Christ's table. For you see at MCC churches, when we say this is an open table, that means all are welcome. You don't have to have gone through any specific classes. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. All are welcome to come and receive. And so as we remember the events of that night when Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, uh, no doubt some of his followers from his almost three years of ministry were there. Some were a family of choice. And so they were all there in the upper room with Jesus. And so throughout the meal, Jesus was continuing to remind them of the miracles that he had performed the miracles that they had witnessed, that they had participated in, that they were the benefactor of. And as he was talking to them, at the end of the meal, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he tore it just as the curtain in the Holy of Holies was to be torn when he was crucified on the cross the next day. And he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. 
whenever you eat of this bread, remember me. Remember the things that I have taught you, the miracles that you have witnessed. And then he passed it among them, and they consumed it. And in like manner, after they had consumed it, Jesus reached into the center of the table, and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe this to be the cup of Elijah, the cup that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. And so he lifted it. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And then he breathed into it with the very same breath that God had breathed into Adam. Because Jesus was God incarnate. She's God in the flesh appearing. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Remember the things that I have taught you. Amen. As part of our consecration, I just invite you to join with me as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I just invite you now to gather the elements that you have with you. And let us consecrate these elements together. Holy God. We come before you right now and we just ask that you would take these elements that we hold and that you would make them for us representative of the body and the blood of Christ Jesus. And that in our consuming these elements, that we would take a step closer to you, that we would become even more intimate with you. That as branches, we would rely upon Jesus the vine even more intently. And so I just pray, dear God, that you would anoint each one of us as we are about to receive the body and blood of Christ Jesus. In these things I pray. Amen. So in the name of God the Parent, Christ the Son, who is our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate, receive now the body and blood of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we just thank you so much for bringing us together, for providing this meal for us that we might remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made when he died on that cross as the Lamb of God, as the ultimate sacrifice. The one who came as you incarnate to teach us 
about loving one another, about what it means to be the branch and for you to be the, the vine. And so I just pray, dear God, that you would anoint each person, that you would bless them, guide them, and protect them. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. And so that brings us to our closing song for tonight. And our closing song for tonight is Good, Good Father. And following our closing song, we will have the blessing over the food that we're going to receive through this coming week, as well as a benediction by John R. But first, we will have our closing song of Good, Good Father. Well, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father to you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us all this love so undeniable i i can hardly speak peace so unexplainable i i can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love Love, love, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Yes, indeed, God is perfect in every way. And so before we have our benediction from John, let us bless the food that we're going to receive through this coming week. And let us bless and anoint those who are going to
provide it for us. So Holy God, we just lift up to you right now, the farm workers who spend long backbreaking hours caring for the produce and the, uh, the other uh, products from the farms. We pray for safety for the transportation workers as they take those products to the processing plants. Prayers for the processing workers that they would remain safe and free from any industrial accidents. And prayers for those who are now considered frontline workers, the store employees, that they would be safe and that there would be no issues for them either. And we pray also, Holy God, for your anointing on each one of us as we receive the food that we ask you to bless, to anoint, that it would strengthen our bodies and nourish us as we go forward throughout this coming week and weeks in the future, as we strive to serve you, to be your hands, your feet, your face, and your voice to those in need. And we know, Holy God, that there will be moments when you prune us back but that is not for anything other than to help us to bear even more highly valuable good fruit for you. In these things we pray. Amen. And so we'll now have our benediction by John. And then following our benediction will be our outro song, which this week Meg is leading us in singing, We Shall Go Out With Joy. As we move forward this week, let us remember the teachings of Jesus and let's be joined together in being his hands, his feet, and his voice to those who need it. And may God have blessing on us all. Amen. Shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the fields will clap their hands. For you go out with joy. Shall go out. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of